Alrighty, hello everybody. So I want to introduce a library that we developed called uh, the const, uh, well, different name, the compile time initialization and build library. So it's a really, really catchy name, so I'm sure it'll catch on. Um, the purpose of the library is to build embedded firmware or other systems um, with reusable components without having to spend runtime for initialization and registration of your extensions. Um, so takes advantage of a lot of const expert and template metaprogramming. It's a lot of fun to make, but let me show you an example. Is this text large enough for people to see? OK, cool. So I haven't used this feature of Compiler Explorer before, so this is a little funky for me. Um, in our main file, we have the basic extension points. We have our nexus, which is the um, uh, crossing of all of our services and all of our features together. Um, and I'll show you an example of what that configuration looks like. And then we have our, our main initialization service and our main loop service. And never mind that this is a naked for loop. We'll just ignore that for now because we can't have a while loop. Uh, so an embedded system, this is a common, a common pattern to have, to have initialization and then a while loop. And within that while loop, you're going to be pinging your various services uh, to execute them. Um, we don't really want to have to change our main file often. It would be nice to just keep it the same always. And so with the CIB library, we can declaratively put together a firmware system. And we can pick components to implement our functionality. So we have this informal greeting, which says, hello world. And we're doing dynamic registration of these features with their, with their, um, with their services at compile time. So if you look at the actual output, the actual code that gets generated, it's really, really small. Now let's take a quick look at informal greeting. And what it's doing is it's extending the main initialization, and then it's writing out hello world. And I'm using puts because puts makes really clean assembly at the call site. So if we go back to our configuration, if I can find it, we have a bunch of other features. So maybe somebody else in their project likes a formal greeting. So we just swap out that component, and now we have a formal greeting. And I don't know, maybe we want to also print out the main loop and print the loop count. And if we go through and look at them, we have this component, which is exporting a new service called on loop count. This is, a, this is a callback where you can pass in, it passes in an integer, and other components can register to be called every time on loop, call, on loop count is executed. So if we look at the print loop count, it is extending main and int, and it's printing out getting ready to count some loops. So that's really important information. And then every time on loop count gets executed or gets invoked, this extension gets called, and we're printing out the loop count. And we can keep building up our, our system by adding more and more components, and these components are expo exporting additional services that can be, that can be extended. Yeah, here we go. So there's another uh, uh, component that we added to identify people, and then another one to greet them. So we have this service that just identifies people, and then it calls some um, any other features that want to do something with that person, and they're just saying hello to everybody um, as they come in. So the use case might not look super exciting on Compiler Explorer, uh, because this is really, really useful for embedded systems or event-based systems, where you need to process lots of different events, and you want to have uh, really fast response time. You want to get things inlined at runtime if possible, and you don't want to pay anything for uh, your initialization. And if you look at the assembly, we see a little bit of initialization here in the library for setting up some pointers for type erasure. Um, but all of the code for doing initialization is gone, and pretty much everything gets inlined. So we have all these different features in totally different independent components that we can pull together and, um, and you know, optimize it really, really nicely. This is the LTO version, which actually looks kind of insane, probably because of uh, some of the other libraries I've included. Um, but even at LTO, these pointer, this pointer initialization, because it's happening in the main function, the compiler is able to reason about it, and it's able to get rid of the pointer initialization and inline um, those function calls as well. Uh, I don't know, look at... Uh, OK, anyways, um, this library is available on GitHub. It is the Intel compile time init build library. I will tweet it on Twitter again, and I'll put it up in the, um, 
uh, the <laughs> Discord channel. Thanks, everybody.